Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. Welcome to the Worth It series where I discuss companies and their products and whether or not I would recommend them to you. And in this video, we are going to be discussing Pro Tools. Is it worth it? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of a head start on where I'm going with this. Part of the reason the Worth It series even exists is because I need a series where I can discuss audio without actually having to show demonstration from my Pro Tools rig. Why? Because sometimes Pro Tools just craps the bed, and the last couple of weeks have been pretty miserable, so this is going to be a little combination of my honest recommendation and little tones of me venting my frustration about Pro Tools. So, okay, there's going to be four categories we'll be discussing. Sound quality... Uh, workflow, customer care, and price point. We're not going to be discussing selection because we're only talking about one specific product here, so it doesn't really apply. But with those four categories, that's going to kind of contextualize my overall recommendation. Okay, let's start with sound quality. From DAW to DAW, the sound quality is more or less the same, and I know that people will argue that. I'm sure somebody in the comments section will jump on in there and say, no, I think that logic sounds better. Here's the thing. I've done a bunch of null tests. I've done a bunch of blind ABX tests. They sound the same. At least measurably speaking, they sound the same. Now, if something sounds better or worse to you, that's fine. Roll with it. But from my point of view, there is really no discernible difference. If there is a difference, it's so insignificant that it's pretty darn arguable anyway. So the real difference in sound quality comes to the stock plugins. Now, as far as stock plugins in Pro Tools goes, I'm going to probably be against the grain here and say that I actually like the sound of the stock plugins in Pro Tools. I think that they're pretty competitive with your other major DAWs. They generally sound at least okay, although generally speaking, third-party plugins will be better than most stock DAW plugins, but there's a few gems in there. I like the Air series overall. I like the DigiDesign Lo-Fi. I use that quite a bit. I think it still holds up. And even the Digi Compressor is actually not bad, genuinely speaking. So I'm going to frame this in terms of other DAWs. Where Pro Tools is lacking, in my opinion, is MIDI instruments. I think that the instrument selection in Pro Tools is pretty darn bad. Uh, it does not hold up to Logic or Ableton or uh, anything that basically comes with instruments. It's probably one of the worst. So ultimately, my use for Pro Tools is not for the instruments, so I'm going to give it a four out of five stars, which for some people might be a little bit generous, but for me, I think that that's my real interpretation here. Okay, workflow. This category I feel like should be like on a 10 star rating because really workflow is so important to a digital audio workstation. It's really the whole essence of whether or not it makes it good or bad, right? If the workflow is bad in a DAW, it's a bad DAW, pretty much straightforward. So let me talk about the good here with Pro Tools. I really like the layout, the functionality, and the general flow of how everything is architecturalized. Uh, I think that for like smooth recording, editing, mixing purposes, it's really laid out in a, in a well thought out, easy and accessible manner. So that's the good, and that's gonna keep this from being a one star. <laughs> <laughs> but now let's talk about the bad. In order for a workflow to be good, it has to be smooth. You can't have the spinning pinwheel of death every 10 seconds. You can't have playback errors every five minutes. You have to be able to use the functions that are included. In this particular case, I've discovered that the bridge audio that has been incorporated into Pro Tools doesn't work. It functionally just doesn't work, and it will screw up your sessions even when you're not using it. Uh, so in terms of like the the reliability, or let's say the stability, if stability was its own category, it would absolutely be a one star. It, Pro Tools is trash when it comes to this, and it always has had problems. It seems like the problems are getting worse somehow. I don't know why. So that's not good. The other thing is the MIDI integration is pretty terrible. Uh, I don't use a lot of MIDI because I'm a recordist and mixer for the most part, but sometimes I do play additional parts onto records. Sometimes I'm trying to do effects that are MIDI triggered. And when that's happening, I find that there's timing discrepancies no matter what I do. And believe me, I've been through the forums. I've been through the tech support. I cannot put a finger onto why the MIDI seems to be off. It's not just my system. Sometimes some systems, the MIDI seems like it's okay, but most of the time there's 
there's some kind of a problem. So the MIDI is terrible. And then lastly, I will say one of the things that people will defend Pro Tools with is that the workflow of trading sessions is really good. I don't find that to be the case at all. First of all, working over like those cloud sessions where multiple people are working on the project at the same time, terrible, basically non-functional. Uh, also, Pro Tools is not the industry standard. Amongst engineers and major studios, Pro Tools is probably still the standard, but if you think about it, that makes sense, because Pro Tools was the only thing around when the major studios were going from analog to digital platforms back in the 90s. So yeah, it's pretty much the industry standard in studios, but if you look at how music is made today, a lot of music today is not made in studios. It's made in home studios, and it's made on laptops on the road, or where whatever, whatever. So is it the industry standard? No, it's not. It's not even number two. The actual most popular DAW is Ableton. The second most popular DAW is Logic Pro. So if you're talking about trading sessions back and forth, yeah, there's a little bit of benefit to the workflow there, but really you're better off having something like Ableton or Logic because that's where that's what most people have these days. So workflow overall, because it's so problematic, I'm going to give this a two out of five stars. And the only reason I'm not giving it a one is because most of the time it is usable, <laughs> which is not a great statement. Okay. That ran over. Let's talk about customer care. One star. Holy moly. Let's just cut to the chase. When it comes to giving a crap about their customers, Avid is the worst. Avid almost seems like they aggressively dislike their customers. And now that Avid has been purchased by a, I think it's a hedge fund or something like that, basically, you know, venture capitalism, trying to get as much money out of it as possible, I don't think that it's going to get any better. Very unlikely. Maybe it will, because it's kind of at the bottom of the barrel. But customer care is like... Well, so first of all, the fact that they keep releasing versions of Pro Tools that are not compatible or don't work with operating systems is bad. The fact that there's always a, a million bugs and glitches that have to get fixed immediately upon release. Basically, anybody who's working in the industry knows that as soon as Pro Tools releases an update, wait. Wait like six months and then when the second update, the update to the update comes out, then you can consider getting it because it's just so problematic. And I think any company that treats its customers like the beta testers, it does not like their customers. It's That's not good customer care. The other issue is the tech support. You have to pay... It's, it's like $50 or $40 for one version of Pro Tools, the like more limited version of Pro Tools for, for tech support. And then if you have the full version of Pro Tools, you have to pay $80. Now, I have done this. Feel free to flame me because I must be an idiot. All you're doing when you do that is you get somebody on tech support who basically knows about the same that you know. Maybe a little bit more technically adept, but unless they escalate your case, you're never actually talking to somebody who's really a thoroughly trained technician. No offense to them, because their job is to just make sure that you as the customer are not doing something dumb. Here's the thing. I've been using Pro Tools for 20 years. I've been through the glitches. I've been through the issues. Every, I don't need another tech support tell person telling me that I need to trash my preferences. I did that. <laughs> We've been there. And I definitely don't need to pay $80 to hear it. The fact that they charge $80 for tech support is crazy. Also, when you're purchasing that customer care tech support, retrieving it requires going around the site for like 20 minutes. The site layout is terrible. So customer care is a one probably should be a zero. Avid should be ashamed of themselves. I have no nice words to say when it comes to how Avid regards their customers, unless maybe you're one of the customers who's paying for like a $100,000 plus Avid system. Then maybe they treat you differently, but I wouldn't know. All right. Price. So price is a weird one. Uh, I have mixed feelings about the pricing of Pro Tools. What I don't like is that the only option that seems to be around is this subscription. And I, I've sort of discussed how I feel about that. I feel like some people should be able to purchase and then hold it on a rig, and then if they don't want to update their rig and they just want to have that for a number of years, that should be an available option. Uh, Pro Tools seems to only have subscription. I don't know if they have product purchase still. I think they discontinued it, but if I'm wrong, correct me. Uh, 
if you want the unlimited version of Pro Tools, like the the fancy schmancy one, it's like six hundred dollars per year. So right off the bat, that puts it way in the trash can in terms of price point. Now, the mid tier version of Pro Tools is actually genuinely usable, and that's three hundred dollars a year, which is not bad, but compared to the competition, it's still definitely not in the category of good. So yeah, that ain't great. Uh, and then the there is a version of Pro Tools that is $100 a year, but it only allows you to have 32 tracks of audio, which I don't understand what the point of that is. I think that's, again, that's a customer care issue really more than anything else. But I mean, it's basically not usable at that point with only 32 tracks of art, uh, audio. Like, what are you going to do with that? So you're looking at $300 for the limited version of Pro Tools, which is very usable, incidentally. Uh, but compared to other DAWs, so you've got Logic, which is $200, you pay it once and you've bought it. You've got FL Studio, which is like $400, you pay it once and you've got it. Uh, Ableton, I think the unlimited version of Ableton is like $600 or $700, but then you pay it once and you've got it. And then if you want to upgrade, you have an opt-in upgrade, and most of those are something to the tune of like $80 to 100 bucks, except for Ableton, which I think is like 200 for the upgrade or something like that. So Ableton is not very good in terms of pricing, but compared to everything else, I mean, for God's sakes, Reaper is like $50 or something like that. You buy it and you've got it. Cubase, you pay one time, it's like $350. Basically, because of the subscription model that they've got, Avid immediately becomes pretty far down the list. So for price point, I would give it a two out of five stars. Yeah, okay, enough rambling about the price point. Okay, so what is my recommendation here overall? Basically, I would say this. I use Pro Tools every day, more or less. I've been using Pro Tools every day for 20 years, more or less. Does that mean that I recommend it? Well, on a certain level, obviously it's usable, right? It's not, it's not like if you get Pro Tools, you're just doomed. I think that's a little bit overboard. But with that said, in the year of our Lord 2023... When we have Ableton, Logic, FL Studio, Persona Studio One, great DAW, uh, Cubase, Nuendo, a million other ones that I'm not going to list off the top of my head because it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Would I recommend to an individual person who's running a home studio, who's buying their first DAW, or somebody who wants to produce music, make beats, make EDM tracks, record their band, whatever it is, for the first time, and they've got like a laptop or whatever, would I ever recommend Pro Tools? Absolutely not. The only time I think Pro Tools is applicable is if you're specifically a recording and or mixing engineer... You're working out of major studios fairly frequently. You're working with other tracking engineers fairly frequently. And for whatever reason, you're learning on Pro Tools. I think under those exact conditions in 2023, I would recommend Pro Tools. But in any other case, pretty much, even if you're a recording and mixing engineer, I'm not so sure I would necessarily recommend Pro Tools. I've thought about just ditching the platform many times myself. I use Logic from time to time. I have no stability issues. So... It's, it's a pretty thin recommendation, and overall, I would actually go with no, which feels hypocritical because I use Pro Tools so often, but it's really hard for me to say to somebody who doesn't already have a DAW, yeah, Pro Tools is the one to get. I really don't think it is, and I think that makes it even a little bit more grave considering it is the primary DAW that I use. Like, I'm not recommending the DAW that I use because I'm using it and I know that it's not worth really recommending. That's pretty bad. Okay, gonna wrap this video right here. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit, sub hit subscribe with the bell notification so you get notified. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.